look at this. This is just a mess. <laughs> Uh, I've got everything in place and let me see if I can show you this look in fact I'll turn off this light uh, yeah it's got that light you can see the the engines lights go in there and then so this is the bridge light and it is connected to the the running light power but that's not yet hooked up to all the fiber optics but as you can see the switches are all working the lights are all working and now i just somehow need to take all of this stuff and shove it in here somewhere I also have this area to work with as well. Uh, this is gonna be the hard part, I think. This is where I try to figure out uh, where I can trim back on some of these wires and trimming back on the fiber optics, uh, figuring out where the best placement of everything is gonna be, and then making it happen. And then, we reassemble it and we paint. Uh, I also did another interesting thing. And, and just so you know, this, this video or videos, I'm not sure if I'm going to break this into multiples. It might end up being that because uh, at this point, I'm not sure how many of these things I've recorded and how long they've taken. But uh, I had set up a little circuit on my breadboard uh, to test the longevity of the the bridge and running lights on one of the power cells. So I'm just running these little three, three volt, uh, these little Sony batteries. And you know, my big concern was it would suck if every couple of hours you were gonna need to swap these things out uh, for new ones, knowing what a pain in the ass this is gonna be to get this all together. Well, uh, so I set it up yesterday morning at 1045 and then checked on it a couple of hours later and checked on it a few hours later and then left and did some errands and checked on it again in the evening, came back in the morning and it was still running just fine. It actually ran for about 26 hours before I needed to break up that circuit in order to test uh, the engine lights and so super pleased with the longevity of the batteries uh, I'm not concerned about that at all anymore now I'm just concerned about getting this all together and making it all you know one cohesive piece I think my biggest concern because really with all these wires the reason this is such a mess is because uh, I wasn't sure how long to make everything, so everything is longer than it needed to be. So now it's just a matter of figuring out how long it actually needs to be and uh, trimming it down to that so that I don't have so much of this excess wire that I need to try and fit. Or I can just try and bundle it up and see if I can, you know, shove it down in there. Because this part, for example, is not coming back apart. Like once this goes back together, it's going to be glued. And so I can just shove wire in there and that's fine. That can, that can be like that. Uh, mostly what needs to get trimmed down are the, um, the fiber optics. And primarily these big thick ones. I'm, I'm mostly, I don't have very many of these. I have what, like eight of these in total? And uh, I'm a little concerned because they're not, they're not super bendy. So they're just going to have to be trimmed down to where they need to be. Oh, that, I don't know. That's not going to be too bad, I don't think. That should be fine. Other thing I noted uh, as I was working with these, uh, I was using hot glue to sort of um, get them into place here so I could kind of point them in this direction. And as I did that, um, they would kind of curve a little bit with the heat. And then I double checked to make sure that I was still getting light passing through from one end to the other, and I was. 
So um, that was an interesting, interesting discovery that should you need to, because you don't want to kink them. If you kink them, I know that you lose uh, some of the light that passes through, but apparently you can bend them with heat. Uh, at least that's what it seems like to me. I really know so little about this stuff. Just the little bit that I learned uh, while I was working on Starship Troopers and watching the other guys uh, do this. I never did this before. So this is my first time. I'm a noob. And that's why this is taking so long. Because everything I do is like, how do I do that again? How is this going to work? How do I wire this up? How do I figure out Ohm's Law? Yeah, every, every bit of that is just a huge, huge pain in the butt. So now, like I said, the big trick is to put it all together, which is what I'm going to do. But it, like I said, I got the two, the two switches down underneath there now. Boop, boop. Oh, I'm so excited. That's so awesome. You can't even barely tell they're there. There's one, there's the other one. Okay, so let me go do that. I'm gonna go put this all together somehow and make this bird's nest of wires and fiber optics work. Uh, and then I'll come back and it should all be assembled. See you in a bit. Well, uh, she's just about together. And I'm just getting the last little bits shoved into the hole there. So let me just tell you that, uh, again, this has been a learning process the whole way through. And I think the biggest revelation for me was how little space is actually in this. And so I actually had to abandon uh, all of the upper hull lighting. And that was because the, uh, the thicker fiber optics were too thick. Uh, in the end, I couldn't make them work. Uh, I had them, they were functional. And as I was trying to squeeze everything into this little space here, uh, some of them broke, maybe even all of them. I'm not sure because I had them kind of wrapped up to, to make it easier to maneuver them around. And then they just stopped working altogether. And it was at that point that I realized that if I just got rid of those, that it would make everything else easier and not even really just easier, but possible. I don't think it was possible previously to get everything into the hull. But if you look, uh, we've got lighting in there. You might even be able to see some glints from the fiber optic, maybe not yet. I think they need to be pointed sort of directly at the camera to see them at all. We've got the awesome amber engine lights, all functional. The switches work. So those are off. That is off. We are all good. Uh, changing batteries. Yeah, it's going to be a trick. Uh, but based on my, uh, my test, um, it's not something that you'd necessarily need to do very often. So one thing I'm, I'm still wondering about is... Uh, this piece here, I kind of want to glue it down to the lower hull. I don't know that I need to. Um, it really wants to, to stay mated with the upper hull. And that's because of the way that the guides work. It fits better up against here. And then when it all comes together, then it, it sits together. I, I don't think I need to. I, it seems to be holding together quite well. Um, I had a, somebody ask me on uh, YouTube about uh, light leak sealing. 
Now I did paint the entire interior of the hull in black uh, in preparation of, you know, dealing with light leaks. Let me turn off this upper light here and we'll get a look at Oh, there we go. Well, <laughs> I might have gone a little far there. But then, you know, we've got the engine lights. Um, you can see there's the bridge light. And you can see some twinkle from the edge lights. It's not going to focus on them, but that's fine. Um, but you also don't see any light seepage all right let's get a light back on so one of the things you do sometimes need to be concerned about with a lighting project is getting seepage of the light like if your plastic's really thin it's possible that you could get some glow from uh around where your light source is um Ooh, I can actually see, if you, if you look just close, you can see there's a little bit of a gap there. And you can see some orange light coming through that gap. It's very, and you don't, I don't see it on this side. But you have to look just at the right angle to get it so I'm not too worried about that now <clears throat> one of the ways you could also have done you could have I could have also done the lighting so actually let me talk about how I did do it I mean I already showed you but uh, there is a single white LED that I have wrapped up in this tubing like this Right, so the LED is completely surrounded by this tubing and then all of the fiber optics, uh, all the fiber optic line feeds into the tube. And what that does is it keeps that LED from spilling light off in other directions. And it keeps all of the fiber optics pointed straight at that LED. And so that sort of solves that problem. I mean, aside from... Uh, the engine light, where we obviously getting a little leakage. Um, and the potential for light leakage on the bridge light. Uh, I don't really have to worry about any light leakage in the main hull itself. But there is another way we could have approached that, and that would be to just have the fiber optics just sort of poke through the hull in all these areas without bundling up all of the uh, the lines and sending them to the LED. You can just light up that interior hull and the, uh, the, the light will be transmitted through the fiber optics. And if you wanted to approach it that way, which is probably a better safe sp uh, space saving way, then you are going to have to worry a lot more about um, uh, light leaks. And one concern for myself about that was that I knew that I needed to keep this hull able to be popped open so that you could get to the batteries. Uh, another option would have been to create a battery compartment door or something, maybe on the lower section. I was considering this here. Um, but that was more work than I wanted to do. And really, this thing holds together so well uh, without having to glue it back together that... I really wanted to just be able to kind of leave it as is. So at this point, uh, I was actually trying to decide if I wanted to put some, uh, some of the finer fiber optics in place of the larger ones that I got rid of. But now that I've been looking it over, I don't feel like the upper hull is really missing anything by not having lights. Um, they look fine just on the lower, on the lower area. It makes the bridge stand out kind of nice. I was actually a little worried about whether or not those large fiber optics were going to um, stand out too much. 
So, so paint. Paint is next. Um, it has been so long since, since I've even considered what this thing might look like painted. I'm going to spend a little time sort of pondering that. And, uh, but I think I'm going to go for a lighter color, uh, like an off-white, and make it a really aged freighter. Almost, you know, Millennium Falcon style, I think. Um, but I want to see about perhaps getting uh, some sort of... Uh, lettering along the side here to make it look more like a commercial vehicle as opposed to the you know Imperial Navy vehicle that it is now and something I discovered kind of late in the game and too late to really do anything about is that it looks like there's supposed to be windows right here um, I don't know what this area of the ship is but there's on either side there's these blacked out windows and I'm just gonna leave them like that because maybe nobody's in there right now. Um, but, uh, you know, that would be another area that you could potentially light. But getting into here is a is another chore all on its own, and that would have meant uh, carving that out and opening it up. And, well, yeah, that wasn't really in the cards. So, otherwise, just, yeah, paint. Paint is the thing. And, yeah, I'm still looking at this where this hull meets these two hull sections meet and I think it's okay but there's just there's a little gap on either side I don't think it matters but it just kind of bugs me a little bit and that there's I don't think there's any way for me to get rid of that uh, without gluing the whole thing together which isn't gonna happen because those batteries are not permanent but anyway let me get to the paint See you in a bit. All right, we're starting the paint. Uh, I give the whole thing a coat of uh, Vallejo Surface Primer in leather brown. And then uh, I've been working the panels, well, you can't see the label, but this is uh, War Colors Brown, I'm sorry, uh, Warm Gray 2. And I've been kind of feathering uh, that onto each of the panels and I, I focus on the centers <clears throat> and work my way out to the edges and that gives you a nice kind of panel fade uh, let's try turning this off there we go and so I've got a nice it's gonna be a nice worn worn white color uh very almost beige actually i'm gonna i'm probably gonna hit this uh with another lighter step and then i'll move on to uh washes i've got the uh, bridge masked off there with some putty i didn't do that with the backlights because uh, uh i just shoot in this direction so i don't get any paint inside that area and of course, as I mentioned before, the uh, the fiber optics are all still long, uh, and then we'll trim those down when the painting's done. Still haven't decided on whether or not I'm going to do anything with uh, markings on the side. Um, I think I will, but that's not that's not a hundred percent decided yet. Anyway, got to get back to it. This is a uh, it's a tedious task getting those panels in. But uh, I'll be back in a minute. Actually, look at that. Kind of, uh, it almost got a, has a stripe right now. <laughs> kind of like that.
Well, I've got the base coat on. Well, the base, the, the, the core hull color is all there. And this, uh, I did end up doing white on top of the warm gray. And I'm really liking it. This is a good, I think this is a good look. It looks like a uh, old but relatively clean ship. Uh, it is going to get a little bit more weathering, but I'm not going to do as much washing as I might normally do on a ship like this um, because I do like this look. I do want it to be <clears throat> relatively clean because the company that runs it wouldn't expect anything else. Uh, this is actually the marking for the side of the ship. It's going to go on the side of the ship. I think that's going to fit pretty well. I've got one for either side. And if you couldn't tell already, it is a uh, veiled reference to FedEx. And I'm actually going to paint it purple and black uh, as, as FedEx normally does. And so that's, that's going to be a key feature. And I'm, I, I may do that next, uh, but I also need to paint the, uh, the engine bells, uh, both the little one and the big ones. These I can still pull off and paint, which is nice. So you got the bottom all done there. I don't know if the light in here is, is making it less apparent how faded a look that is. I think somewhere in there you're going to see it. It might not be until the final photographs are done that you kind of see the full extent of the uh, of the look of the paint. And I did all the little extra bits, the guns and the dish and the uh, the TIE fighter holders that were, were probably not going to get used much. And I still have to go and finish these. Um, I'm not sure. This will probably end up being the final piece of the puzzle here. Um, some of them are more done than others. Like the first one I printed out, I ended up doing a lot of kind of noodling on it uh, with sandpaper and such before I got to printing the other ones. So um, that one, that first one is definitely done. The second one is farther along and then the last two need some work. And so that's another element that needs to get done. And like I said, I will be doing some washing. I'll probably do a couple of panels of various colors just to give it that sort of Millennium Falcon aged look. Maybe a little uh, hull scorching. You know, they probably have had some run-ins with uh, scum and or villainy. And uh, that's going to do it, I think. I think I'm just about there. Uh, so let me go off and get some more work done and I'll come back and, uh, and we'll talk about it. See you in a bit. Well, I believe this is done. Uh, I am rather pleased. Uh, right now, what's sad is that you can't really see the bridge lights or any of the running lights along the edge because the the lighting here sort of overpowers it. Let me see if I can help out the situation. That doesn't seem to do much. Turn off some more lights here. Yeah, there's still kind of too much light going on. Oh wow, even if you block that out. Uh, let's do this. That's well, not showing up at all. Oh well. You're just going to have to take my word for it. Let me turn these back on. Um, yeah, I just tried to photograph it, which is why it's sitting out here right now. And uh, it's pretty tough to do. The engine lights obviously show up just fine. But the rest of it, 
you kind of have to be here in order to see it. Like I can see, I can see the bridge lights, but it's really subtle, you know. And I guess you can kind of see, you know, that doesn't look, uh, that doesn't look normal, you know. That doesn't look painted on there. But it also, you know, it's not lit brightly, which is okay. I mean, I didn't want it to be uh, bright like the engines. The engines should be super bright in comparison. I think the uh, the kind of joke of the... Oops, that's going to come off. The joke of the, the markings is apparent. <laughs> the whole idea was to make that look like FedEx. And it does, but I'm using the Arbesh font. Uh, and I just found characters that resembled those letters as close as I could. And that seemed to work out really well. Uh, as far as the painting goes, I mean, obviously it's kind of skipped ahead here because I, I just wanted to get this finished. And I ended up doing some light black washing, not something I normally do, but with the white, it seemed like a good idea. Heavier, definitely, uh, along this edge, but very, very light uh, on the hull. And in fact, really, it's not even really wash. I, I did streaking. Um, you might be able to see it on the hull, if we bring the hull a little closer. Uh, it's really just to dirty it up and to give it some, uh, to give it some life. And I didn't want it to just be the airbrushing that I did. And then I did some, uh, carbon scoring, some hits, uh, along the hull. Not very many. Again, I didn't want to, I didn't want to go overboard with this. I wanted it to still remain relatively clean. And there are a few, uh, panels with different colors on the top there. And the cargo pods I'm pretty pleased with. Uh, the whole idea with those was to make them look, well, I, I'd spend a lot of time looking at various Star Wars cargo pods, mostly in the cartoons. Uh, you don't see a lot in the movies. And I thought I got something that is, you know, somewhat representative. They do sort of clash a little bit with the look of the ship. I'm okay with that. Um, they don't need to look like the ship because they're not ships. They are shipping containers. Uh, and so... I think they do serve their purpose. They would be huge shipping containers. Like you could fit, well, you couldn't fit a TIE fighter in there, but you know, that's a, that's a fair amount of storage space. But these would be something that you could drop off in space. You could uh, land them down on a planet and they'd hold a lot of crap. But it would also be much easier to do that, you know, assuming these are like uh, um, sort of universal cargo pods a lot easier to do that than to actually have to land the ship, open up a cargo bay, unload your stuff, you know, load things back in where you could just drop these cargo pods really quickly and pick up new ones. So, you know, sort of like a semi. Anyway, I will share uh, my final photos with you. Uh, I think at least one of those is going to have a decent look at the, the running lights, which are not showing up on video at all, as far as I can tell. Um, and, and then we're going to call it. So thank you to everybody who has uh, stuck with me since, what was it, January that I got started on this project? And, you know, if you, if you liked this, then definitely hit like on the video. Helps other people to find it. And if you want to make sure that you see more of these videos in the future, you're definitely going to want to subscribe, if you haven't already, which you might have. Because I'm up over 6,000 subscribers now, which eh, is not bad. Uh, that's going to do it for now.
man, I can't believe this is done. Anyway, <laughs> that's going to do it for now. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.